it'll be 2025. Yeah, I haven't gotten gotta used start, to saying 2024 yet. Got to start getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. That's right. St. Patrick's Day is coming. Mm -hmm. We just uh, recovered from Valentine's Day and our birthdays. Welcome to everybody. Uh, we are in Michigan for um, the last uh, Ask Us Anything for a while. We will be doing the rest of our Ask Us Anythings, at least for the next several weeks, from the road, starting next week. I'm not quite sure where we'll be next Sunday night, but we'll be somewhere. <laughs> and uh, we'll hopefully be live <laughs> from there. And, Never know. <laughs> uh, uh, I have had, I've been working all week, uh, really building up our mobile podcasting video studio. And I've got miniature versions of all the equipment that we have here that I have to now test out. I was actually going to try and test them out tonight, but the, oh, well. I got, oh, well. This is a great night. Um, Jennifer made homemade peanut butter cookies. <laughs> I had five of them. Yeah, I did. Yeah, maybe more. <laughs> I don't know. I had a lot of them. It's terrible. All that, right. That's what happens when I turn my back. Yes. Hey, I, look at that over there. I'll grab one. Uh, all right. We're going to just get right to your questions and see how we can do. I uh, hope you guys are somewhere well and have had a great week. And let's uh, kind of jump in. First up uh, from mm -hmm. Linda Ward. Hello from Robbinsville, New Jersey. Question. Any thoughts on what to do about medical insurance when traveling to Canada? Looking forward to the maritime. Um, yes. Um, Excuse me. Just go to the tour organizers, which is fantasy RV, uh, RV, fantasy RV tours com, And uh, they have a whole thing there on insurance. And you can uh, have one tailored just for whatever needs that you think you need, uh, you have. Um, they have trip cancellation service, all sorts of other things, but uh, that's who we, we will use and we recommend you do too, fantasyrvtours.com because uh, um, health coverage in Canada is a lot different than here. And I think all of you know, don't leave the country to go north or south or east or west without additional coverage. I'm sure you all know that by now. Uh, we have heard so many horror stories about uh, mm -hmm. The U.S. people got sick or worse things happened in Canada. So just well, give some thoughts. It to could that. be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. We see a Canada nurse because... who was held as a hostage in the Caribbean because she yeah, couldn't literally pay a bill. Nurse, yeah, was they the were Caribbean. passing the hat at the hospital trying to raise enough money so that she could leave the country. She had gotten sick in the Caribbean and uh, she, her insurance wouldn't was useless there. So yeah. Canada's they not, wouldn't let Canada's her leave. not like that. Uh, so you don't have but, to worry I mean, about it. But, but it's always Don't good presume. Yeah. Don't presume. Uh, Linda Ward, we are looking forward to that trip, too. That's going to be a great trip. Um, road trip, buddy. Oh, what's for dinner? We had lasagna. And as you heard, I made some peanut butter cookies. Normally, I don't make cookies or pies or bake because I don't want to tempt the two of us. Oh, look how nice you are. You mean me. Yeah. But what kind of grandma am I if I don't make cookies? Yeah. Well, Randy Dexter had uh, barbecue meatballs, noodles, and salad. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. So what do you know? Janet Bullard from Chile, Chile Mississippi. Chile, Mississippi. I wonder how chilly it is down there. It's, it's a little chilly here, too. Brandy's in uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, Anne and Mark in North Carolina. Those are the Turners, I believe. Hello from a beautiful lakeside campsite. Where are they? At the Uweri National Forest in North Carolina. I don't know that national forest. No, we don't know that one, but um, I bet it's beautiful. Good for you guys. Glad to see you are out and about uh, and not just sitting inside. Mary Heminga. Hello from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. When the wind comes whistling over the plains. Um, Randy Dexter. Do you have an RV warranty? Are RV warranties worth it? Which RV warranties are recommended? Wholesale warranties. They are a brokerage. So uh, what specific warranty is recommended? Whichever one wholesale warranties matches to your needs is the best coverage and the best price. That's why we like wholesale warranties because they will shop your warranty needs around to a whole bunch of different companies. And then you can kind of pick the one that fits you best. Um, so go for it. Uh, we are going to have a really interesting conversation on the podcast uh, this Wednesday with an attorney who basically is going to blow the lid on one of the most despicable practices in the RV industry, talking specifically about a case that was uh, uh, adjudicated in, in uh, Virginia involving Camping World, 
and Thor Motor Company uh, and uh, peripherally involved even Chrysler. But uh, you, you need to hear this because this thing that Camping World does and many other big dealers do, and now even some mom and pops, is basically have you right away, uh, when you make your purchase, you agree not to be able to sue them as a lemon or sue them for um, warranty work. It's, it's, you got to hear this po podcast interview. It's coming up Wednesday. Uh, but uh, so that's why we do uh, recommend you get a warranty. Uh, and Wholesale Warranties is the co is a company we've been recommending them for years. Um, they are a brokerage firm. They basically will shop it around and come up with several opportunities for you. And, you know, you just, everybody has different needs and what you want, and depending on how old your RV is. Uh, so check them out. Uh, do we have one? I should tell you, we do not have one at this point uh, on our uh, fifth wheel. We've sold our Class C. And uh, right now, for a while, we only have one RV, which is our fifth wheel, which is sitting in uh, Tennessee on our property in Tennessee. Uh, but Randy, start with wholesale warranties, see what they have. And then you can check out all those different companies that they will give you a recommendation if you want on your own. I can't say any one is better than the others. They all depend on your needs, your RV. Eric Miller. <coughs> Excuse me. Good to see you. <laughs> Excuse me again. Good to see you both in good health. What is your opinion of the new Norco battery powered uh, refrigerator freezer? As cold as the propane powered refrigerator, certainly safer. Uh, I suppose if that's a real big concern of yours, uh, I don't know that unit. I've seen it uh, advertised. I probably would not buy one myself. Uh, I have not found a need to have a battery powered freezer. Mine works through uh, LP, through propane uh, while I'm traveling. I always turn it on. Um, we've done it this way for a dozen years and um, it's all, it's been great. Uh, I think it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm curious how much it drains from the battery. Uh, you certainly would want to have lithium and a good battering system. Um, I think as you're traveling, that's probably, um, you know, if, I, if all things were equal and I was buying a new one, I would certainly give it some consideration. But uh, at this point, I'm I'm happy with our our propane and natural gas and uh, an electric uh, refrigerator. Burton Carlisle. Hello, hello from Lawrence, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Georgia, and Gail Gebert, our neighbor in Stevensville, Southwest Michigan, not too far from us here. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gail. There he is, Chris Mondo Biondo. Now he's in Virginia. How come you're not in Kansas anymore? <laughs> That's where he's from. But I think he told us he's on a work trip for a while. James Massey. Follow up from the Amazon session. We use the thick pads with uh, levelers, uh, considered snap pads, concerned with clearance. Should I be? James is talking about our Amazon live stream that we <laughs> did uh, last week. Uh, Thursday night. And uh, one of the items that I recommend is one of the must have things that we have in all of our RVers that have levelers, and that is snap pads. Uh, they snap onto the bottom of your levelers and they uh, spread the weight out. They help make it more stable. They don't damage the, uh, the, the, the pad, the surface that it's on. Um, yes, they do. They do take about an inch and a half uh, more of uh, clearance. So if you have really, really low clearance already, then maybe that is a consideration. We've had it on all of our RVs and um, it's not been an issue at all. It was. Well, that wasn't a clearance issue. That was an operator error <laughs> when I drove over a... Well, I'm thinking about when we were where the elk are and we were on a dirt road that was a oh, lot of potholes and yeah, things. Yeah, that was a... That was a yeah. So you know you where you tell travel. All of my dirty secrets, all of my stupid things that I've done. But yes. you know where you travel. Yeah. Um, you know how much clearance you need. You know, James. I don't know. I would certainly always get it if it's a worry of yours. Don't don't get it. If you're right. happy with what you got. No need to to change this thing if you're happy. Corrine Thomas. Hello from Raining Tampa. Do you have to pay a maintenance fee for the road in front of your Tennessee property? No, we don't. We are on a county road, so we don't have to. Yeah. Very happy to say. Yeah, many other developments. That's why we, we bought early in that development, and there were only a limited number of lots on the road that we're on. Uh, the others, I think it's $1,000 a month or a month, $1,000 a year uh, for common upkeep of all the roads. So, yes, you do have to pay uh, those if uh, in many most. That's pretty standard through almost 
you know, any development, unless it's on a county road like ours. Yeah, is. and let me tell you, our county road is an adventure road. <laughs> yes, it's like one there lane. There are places where it's one lane. And it, sometimes the hill is down like that, but uh, yeah, you get you kind of are white knuckled and biting your fingernails yeah. as you drive up it every time. But yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, we we are lucky on ours. Bundle and Artie. Uh, good evening, uh, Mike and Jen from Prescott Valley, Arizona. Still waiting on my new truck. Yes, it takes mm. forever. And that, uh, I don't know what brand truck that you have, but I think it was Ford. The Ford, they're talking about another another strike at the Ford heavy duty truck plant in Louisville. Man, uh, they already are very hard to get these, um, these heavy duty trucks, as you probably know if you're waiting for one. But uh, they're like gold mine. You should buy, invest in them because <laughs> they're selling good. Steve Egbert hi, on the West Coast. Yeah. Hi, everyone from California. Hey, Steve. Good to see you on there. Gray Wolf Travels. A steak and baked potatoes at, at uh, Camping on the Gulf. Oh, Sounds wait, delightful. That's not far from us. When we, We'll be there next week near there. Uh, I think you're at Camp Gulf, I think, probably close by. Hey, before I take any more questions, a quick announcement. This is directed towards um, those in our RV lifestyle community, the new community we formed, particularly uh, our, uh, exclusively for our supporters, those who are our supporters. Um, actually, nobody else can go there. Don't bother go. We should take that off the screen because <laughs> if you are one of our supporters, as soon as this goes off the air tonight, we will make available in the supporters only group for you advanced sign up for our first um, spring and summer gather our spring and summer uh, RV lifestyle gathering. We're going to announce all the details to you first. And that's one of the perks you get for being one of our supporters. So check the community. Um, like all of our gatherings, you know, we limit them in size. We've often talked about, we could make them much bigger. We could get a couple hundred people or more, but we lose the reason we do those gatherings, which is interactive with you guys, so interact one-on-one -on -one and get to know everybody and so nobody gets left behind. So we keep all of our groups to about 60, 65 people. And um, th that equates to about 30 rigs, 25, 30 rigs. So we do expect this one to sell out. It's got a great theme and uh, we're going to announce it to the special supporters. They get a three-day head start to make their... Um, get their tickets if they want for it and that will be available as soon as for the supporters just the special supporters will be as soon as this goes off the air uh tonight on the rv lifestyle community which is community.rvlifestyle.com now for the rest of the community for everybody out there we will announce the details on this in a special live stream thursday night at 7 p.m eastern time uh and there'll be a live stream that goes uh on the rv lifestyle community so um, check out on that, but uh, supporters, as per your perks, you get three days advance, uh, and then we open it up to everybody else on Thursday night. So I hope that was clear. <laughs> it's hard. It's always hard to have all these details. Ty Webb. Hello from Indianapolis. Big parties this weekend with all of the uh, visitors in town. Why? I wonder what's going on. What, am I missing something in Indianapolis? Say it wasn't the Super Bowl, that's for sure. Um, hmm. We will be going through Indianapolis next Saturday, Saturday afternoon, as we head south again. So, um, Deb Casto. Hello from St. Andrews SP in Panama City. St. Andrews State, State Park. Park, yeah. First uh, time here and loving it. Aren't those incredible beaches, Deb? They are just beautiful beaches. So, mm -hmm. enjoy them. I hope the weather is good for you. Yeah. And in fact, I hope it's warm. We're going to be down there for a couple of weeks on and off we have some really cool stories that we have planned that we're going to do uh in florida and we'll give you all the details on those um uh, as we get closer to them but uh we're gonna have fun in florida this this year this spring uh ty webb again i guess you and jen have created a moving blue zone versus a small village in italy or greece okay do you understand that a moving blue zone versus a small village. Ty, I'm, I should tell everybody, I came down with a fever yesterday. It was weird. Just came out of nowhere. And I'm a little bit like, duh. Jennifer <laughs> said, you better be sharp tonight, Mike. And I tried one, to talk him into not doing this tonight. That one went right over my head. But <laughs> I'm sure I'll get it when I look back in the rechat. Phyllis, do you understand it? She does. She does. Will you come explain it to me? 
Let's bring Phyllis on. <laughs> so a blue zone is a location that has uh, good quality of life and people live longer and healthier. So it's a blue oh, wow. zone. So there are places and pockets all over oh, the planet. Got it. So from here to Tennessee to Florida, actually, yeah. thank you for helping me get through the fog. <laughs> what would we do without you, Phyllis? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I'm not a, <laughs> a little battered and bruised. Uh, <coughs> Carol Fife. Hello from Chesterland, Ohio. Beautiful day today, and now it's 29 degrees. Can't wait for spring. Yeah, I think it's in the air. It was cold here the last couple of days. It was supposed to start warming up and be in the 50s in Michigan. Sheila Archer. Good evening from Tennessee. What has been your most serious, costly craftsmanship issue with any RV you have owned? Thanks. Hmm. Well, I think you have to really go back early, early, early into our RV lifestyle back in like 2015, 2014. You mean our prototypes? When we got the prototype, the first production lithium class B van that was sold in North America. Um, and I wouldn't cause that was not really a craftsmanship issue. It was really the fact that they were trying to figure out how to make lithium batteries work. And we uh, we're fortunate to live not too far, a couple hundred miles from the factory in Ontario that made that RV that we had. And so, I mean, every week I was there for something. We tried a lot. Um, so I wasn't, it, it wasn't craftsmanship and it was not, it didn't really cost us anything because we were sort of testing it out. In terms of, um, we had a window blow out of our first fifth wheel last year while we were driving and and I think that probably was caused because the uh, red latch, because it was an escape window, wasn't shut properly. And we think because they were doing some work inside the coach, it was at the mm -hmm. factory actually. And we think somebody had cracked that well, window to get some air in and we don't they just know. didn't seal it up properly because that was it. Do you, can you think of any craftsmanship issues that we've had on any of our RVs, really major ones? Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, not much. I mean, I hear about them all the time from other people, but we have been pretty blessed with ours. Uh, Ed Nadine. <laughs> Uh, hello, neighbor from Malinta, Malatine, of the, Malinta, Malinta Ohio. You two are a great asset to the RV community, and we thank you for that. Not tonight, I am not. <laughs> I'm, I'm still about all, I'm operating about three out of the four hmm. cylinders. Yesterday, it was two out of four. I don't think you ever operated on any cylinders yesterday. You were, yeah, I was, it's you so were funny. a basket Just case. Out of blue, it hit. Grisky. Winnebago has a new Class C floor plan. Do uh, you two have any insight to even more floor uh, floor plans? Uh, we did a, uh, oh, he likes our, our new community too. Good. Uh, we did a video on uh, some of their new class C's that we saw at the Tampa show. So go back on the YouTube channel and look at those and you can see them. They had a new floor plan for the Echo and also for the Revel, the Revel, um, not the Revel, Revel. And um um, I, that's the only ones that I know of, you know, Winnebago and Thor make a new model floor plan and a new model, like five times a year. It seems to me, I can't keep track of them all. I don't think anybody can, but, uh, the, the ones that we checked out with the new echo and the new, uh, the revel, the revel is a class B, but the, uh, the, uh, echo is a class C and they had a new floor plan. And we did a video release on it. So that's the only one I have. We do get uh, tips here and there about new models that come out, but really it's, they just, they kind of like just change the name and a little bit of the colors and the decor. And, you know, there's only so much you can do with a inside of a small little RV, but um, Winnebago is always experimenting, always trying new stuff. And I'll give them credit for that as the store, the big companies, uh, but every year there's two or three new models, it seems, that come out of their B's and C's. So uh, we'll do our best to keep track of them for you. That's all I can I can say. But uh, we did do a review in January last month. Andy Blake. We are considering buying a small gas generator for our travel trailer. Where do campers carry their gasoline safely? Usually in the back of the pickup truck, um, in the back of the truck that you pull it. And, you know, make sure it's tied down and it's not sloshing around. Uh, it's all a big concern. That's why we've never really worked with the gas generator before. The only time we've had a generator is if it came built into the uh, to the RV and worked off of uh, propane or it uh, tapped into the diesel fuel that we had. But uh, 
That's how most people carry it. Okay, so if they're pulling with something other than a truck, where are they going to put that gasoline? I don't know. <laughs> tie it to the, I mean, I wouldn't want to tie it to the outside of my rig. Well, you could. You I wouldn't know. want it on the inside of my yeah, rig. Yeah. I wouldn't want it in the back seat of my vehicle. Yeah, well, it stinks, you know. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, I don't know where you're going to put it, but I, I wouldn't put it in a covered area. That's that's the big thing. I wouldn't I want it on my roof. No, I wouldn't want it on my roof. <laughs> you can know. carry it on your lap. <laughs> yeah. No, thank oh, you. gosh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Facebook user. I bought a brand new travel trailer in 2022 in December. It has a lot of issues that came from the dealership. I tried going to the dealership. They won't do anything about it. I'm in debt with this travel trailer. What can I do? Well, uh, for starters, um, probably not much. I mean, I don't know who you bought the travel trailer from, what dealership. And I don't know what brand it was, but uh, I'm going to come back to urging you to listen to the podcast that we have um, coming up Wednesday with uh, um, an attorney who is kind of an expert in lemon law. He is not kind of, he is one of the leading lemon law attorneys in the country. He says to buy a new RV, we would have to be insane because it is rigged against the buyer. And he cites in particular Camping World and then other great big uh, RV dealerships says the only dealership you should buy from should be a mom and pop operation where you know, one sale is an important thing to them. Uh, he points out that the sales contract that you sign makes most people sign away all of their rights to sue or to pursue a warranty from that dealer. And then there's another exclusion that you often have that some of the manufacturers have that makes you, if you are going to sue them uh, for, for or, or do legal action against them, in Indiana, where it was, where the vehicle was manufactured, not in Virginia or wherever you might happen to be, and you bought the unit, it is uh, it is a scandal, really. And uh, I, I just urge you all to listen to this. It's coming up Wednesday, and uh, uh, the advice that he gives. Bottom line, I hate to give away my story, <laughs> but well, uh, the whole thing away. <laughs> yeah, I should have done this because now everybody, uh, every other YouTuber is going to go try and do the same story ahead of me. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we have a really good interview with the guy. And, uh, and everybody should know about it. So that's okay. And that's coming Wednesday. So um, you're out of luck. You know, if your dealer is not going to do much, you certainly can talk to an attorney. Um, if you're in California, you might have some luck because they have been successful in some lemon law uh, as it affects RVs. But most states, almost all of them, do not have a lemon law uh, that would cover an RV. Some do, but not, not all. Uh, so I don't have enough information to give you anything more. What can you do? Try and talk to an attorney. Um, you're going to have a major battle on your hands. If they say that they aren't going to do anything about it. They pretty much don't have to. So, uh, yes, you are in debt with that travel trailer. And if you sell it, you're going to be upside down because uh, you might have turned your financing, applied that right into your, uh, into your sales contract. And if you did that, that... $25,000 trailer that you bought is really a $35,000 because you might have financed it for 20 years and you are obligated for all that interest unless and until you sell it. So uh, this is, it's just a mess out there and it's, it's all rigged against the buyer. So I don't have enough to answer you anymore, except listen up to the podcast and see what you think from that. I guess you can't very well get some of your friends in on their busiest day of the week. Pick it. <laughs> you know, probably have your rest and you probably end up in I don't know. prison. You know, it's enough to make me actually think back in my old journalism days to really organize a campaign and make it an issue to make dealerships take responsibility, to make manufacturers take responsibility. Now, I'm not labeling all of them because there's many good ones. We've been lucky to work with really excellent ones and buy from them. But most people, so many people, you know, they haven't done their research enough. And um, I, I, my heart goes out to them. Uh, all right, RV Lifestyle from our community, from the RV Lifestyle community. Mike, did you get your Ford uh, truck uh, camera monitor to hook up with your Montana camera? Always nice to see where you've been. Oh, I did not do that. No, I haven't. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's on the list of stuff I'd like to do some days, but uh, I don't, I don't really, I, I haven't done it. <laughs> So what can I say? I kind of know where I've been. I used to put in where we were all the time. I had a little great little map 
but when people show up at 11 o'clock knocking on your door, <laughs> thinking that it's okay to come and say hi, it just was a little creepy sometimes. So, um, so I don't necessarily say that, although if you're a regular here, you know, we tell you where we are all the time, but uh, I haven't hooked that up. So, uh, and I don't know when I'll get a chance to do it, but I'd like to. Uh, Bud Lenardi, I got a good idea. I yeah. use milk crates in the bed of a truck to secure them and store the cans safely. Always use good approved fuel cans. Yes, excellent advice, Bud. And again, that's where I say put it in the back of the pickup and milk crates would be great because you can you can get those that you know, any of the big box Home Depot or Lowe's and secure them back and, uh, and you're good to go with that. Great idea. Larry Whitesell. Did you forget about the refrigerator door that fell off? <laughs> oh, oh, I did. Yes, I did. We did forget about the refrigerator door, but that was on Alicia it. Travel Van. They replaced it. The yeah, yeah. You know, it was uh, actually we replaced it with a whole new refrigerator. They didn't yeah. just send a new door. They put a whole new refrigerator. Now it took me some time. And in all truth, it wasn't that terrible of an inconvenience after we got off the idea of it, the door falling off. And then we just put it back in and we kind of. You could only open it one way. We would open it you with one way. You didn't open it both ways. Yeah. So, and you know. Always made sure you pushed it shut at the bottom. Yeah. But that was a domestic refrigerator. And it was, Alicia loves it because it opens from two different sides. But, you know, it wasn't, it was I mean, I obviously didn't, didn't occur to me until you just mentioned that. So it was not <laughs> anything that caused too much of an issue with us, except. At the time, we were fixing lunch someplace. The danger of it falling on your foot. That's that was the biggest thing. danger. That would have hurt. But uh, yeah, we put it right back in and we got it to shut and seal. I just couldn't open it the other way. It would mm -hmm. fall off again. And they replaced it immediately. Carol Fife. Well, it wasn't immediately. It took a couple of weeks for it to come in. But, but, but Carol Fife. How and where did you get your window fixed? I uh, had a slide rear window shattered just before I got my, to my son's house in North Carolina. It is still boarded up. The cost is almost $700 and six weeks out. Ugh. Well, I can't help you in North Carolina. We were at the Tampa RV show when our rear window broke and I, it was a pain. I tried Safe Light, you know, all those ads, Safe Light is there. No, they weren't there. They wouldn't come at all. They wouldn't come to where I was located. And then they said I had to go to one of their locations and they couldn't see me there until 10 days later. And I was, you know, I, I wasn't going to stick around the Tampa RV show for 10 days after it ended. And so I did some searching and I found some, and I can't remember the name of it. It's <laughs> in the video I did on it. Uh, a guy up in, it's a company that <laughs> it's a brokerage company is he's, he sends technicians all over the state to fix windows on site. Uh, I called him. He was there the next morning, two guys showed up and they had that new window out the old window out cleaned up the new window in, in about an hour. So, and that my cost, it was expensive. I did not file an insurance claim on it, um, but it was about a thousand bucks. I think it was 950 bucks or something for the whole rear window. And it's, you know, it was great. The guy was based in, I think the company was based in Orlando. They don't have it. I don't know. If they're not in North Carolina. So maybe there's something like that in North Carolina, but six weeks out. Yeah. Good luck. Um, you know, it's hard to get anything done these days. It really is. D Parker. Hello from Arizona. I recently got home from the hospital. Glad to be watching your channel again. I sure missed my puppy dogs. Have you guys ever done a video of the pet products you use for Bo? Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know. Well, I don't, we've done I don't think we have. We don't, by the way, Bo's name is spelled like B-O, body language. We should have spelled Not he it B-E-A-U because he is B-O. It wasn't Obama's... Dog named Bo. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, spelled B-E-A-U. So mm -hmm. that's probably why people think, but no, he's B-O. B-O. Not that he has B-O, but, and it really he came from his official name. And we, you know, it's, it's his, his predecessor was Ty Bo and uh, his registered AKC name. And so we named him Bo after just B-O after Ty, the old dog that he replaced. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible that he replaced, but the old uh -huh. dog died. And, and, uh, we were given a new the, puppy. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we've done a video on uh, the satellite collar we use from him, which is just amazing security for that. I don't know if we really have a lot of products. We have a little, we have a couple of things. Maybe we should do one. Um, yeah. We did a video on, uh, we had a pet monitor that we use a lot with him called Waggle, mm -hmm. which tells us the temperature inside. 
So I guess we could redo or not. We could do that, those two, and probably a couple. I love it. The people remember stuff. You guys are helping me out because I'm still <laughs> a little punchy from that fever. Actually, I think I still have a little fever. <laughs> That's because I'm sitting next to you. It doesn't go over too well. Um, Kelly Courtney, she started out with a fever and she was foggy. She has pneumonia now. Please take care of it. Well, Jennifer had pneumonia. Yeah, I hope I don't get it again. Yeah. Mm. It's amazing. Um you know, for when you first get a fever, it feels all right, you know, because you get all cuddled up and you cover up with blankets and it's so nice and yummy. And then you start to ache because you're shivering. And well, it's, it's a flu fun. bug. It's not fun. I think, I think that's what's going around. But, mm -hmm. uh, our son was telling us everybody out in our area has this flu bug. Yeah. Well, Kelly, I'm sorry that you're not feeling well. And Jen, I know uh, this. Going I hope through, you but... didn't end up in the hospital with your pneumonia. And uh, uh, Bob Leach. When you need to rotate your fifth wheel tires, where do you usually have this done? Um, I have never had to have that. We done. haven't had to do that um, yet. I, I don't know. I haven't had to do it yet. I suppose um, I would call Brad. <laughs> Brad is my RV service tech that I use in Tennessee. He's also my neighbor. He's RVRX. That's his name of his company, RVRX. And um, Brad could come out and he uh, could... He can do everything. So, Brad, rotate my tires. But, you know, I've only got a couple thousand miles on those tires. So, what would you do? Go to a truck stop? I I don't know if you go to a truck stop. I think you go to any big, well, big truck. You know, you have to just center. make sure you had a place where you could haul it and pull it in. And they, yeah. they, they'd come out and do it in the parking lot. And you have those levelers so you can pop it all up and you could do it that way. But uh, I think I just would have, uh, have Brad do it. <laughs> <laughs> you were, if you've been regular, you've heard us talk about Brad a lot. We are so lucky because in this little development that we have our five acres in Tennessee, Brad lives down the holler and up the hill, up the ridge from us. And he runs a company called RVRX and just a great neighbor and a great tech. So uh, I'd have Brad do it. Uh, are you fan? We just finalized plans for an 11 state trip with uh, 19 stops. RV Travel Wizard is an awesome tool to help uh, plan long trips, hitting Kentucky, Missouri, and the Panhandle. I wonder where you're gonna be in the Panhandle because we're gonna be based out of there for the next six weeks or so. So if you have any questions, you can reach us. And you know, this is another pitch for you guys all to join this mm -hmm. new RV lifestyle community because unlike Facebook where your posts disappear and they only show them to a few people, uh, your posts stay up all the time. And if you're a member of that, uh, you can find, just chat me up. This, there's a chat button and you can have you can send me an instant message and, and uh, I answer them as often as I can. And uh, we're happy to, to connect with you. But you guys all should be a part of this community. You shouldn't let big tech uh, like Facebook uh, ruin your lives with their nastiness. <laughs> Try that community. Uh, and uh, good luck on that trip. And RV Trip Wizard is this planning tool. It really is nice. Uh, e. Kim Doog. Just watched your Unity review. Looking at a 2022 Unity FX, any advice on the price point of two-year-old Unity? Thanks, Mike in Maine. Well, it's going to probably cost you. That's, we just sold a 2023 Unity. So uh, ours 23, actually the new owners take possession of it Friday. So, um, you know, they're going to get pretty much top dollar for it. First, the Leisure Travel Van Unity is a really popular unit. They're very much in demand. It takes a couple of years to get a new one. So um, you're going to probably pay pretty close to the MSRP um, that they had in 2022 with probably, you know, 20%, maybe 10% off that. I don't know. You know, it depends on how well it was taken care of, whether the people were smokers and whether, um, you know, how many miles it has, but uh, uh, their top dollar still those, that those brands. Um, so enjoy and it. Share that tragic story about the people who waited two years for a unit. Yeah. You know, we, um, this was on the community the other night, somebody had just posted um, that they were selling their, one of their units. I think it was, a, I think they're selling, actually you should go look on uh, our community, E Kim do, cause we have, I just added a, a for sale by member, site and i think they're selling a unity on that site wasn't it a wonder it was a wonder it wasn't the unity um uh, i don't know i don't remember but uh, what i remember though is she and her husband waited two years to get it and she wrote how they got it finally last may that took delivery 
in June, something happened and he is now bedridden and they've never been able to use it. And they waited those two years to get that. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. And if you can do it, go for it. I've often said when somebody says, oh, it's a two year wait. If you're sure that's the one you want, order it, buy something else, maybe not quite as good, but something that will let you get out there and enjoy the RV lifestyle because you don't know what tomorrow brings. But good luck on getting it, Mike. Uh, Unity is a, is a beautiful rig, beautiful rig. Mm -hmm. Bob Leach. Uh, do you have the new Starlink antenna or the old one? I have the new one. I have the new super big one. I have the $2,000 one that goes on your roof. It's a permanent flat mount. And that's what we use for, for ours. And yes, Waggle is a great product. We really like Waggle. Mm -hmm. We do. Bud Lenardi. Uh, is there any special food or vitamins that you use for Bo? We don't, but we probably should give him something. Is Bo here? He's, He's right behind you. I don't know if that will pick him up. This no, that's okay. Here. He's sleeping right behind you. Um, the floor right there. Where is you he? can't. You can't see him. Okay. Is he He's behind there? you. No. I don't know where he is. He's right behind you because because okay. you're his daddy. Okay. He's your shadow. He is my shadow. <laughs> yeah, it's my, he keeps me yeah, out of trouble. Bo is eight years old. He really should be on something, but the vet hasn't suggested anything. I guess I should ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, APG show. Don't the tires rotate <laughs> when you travel? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Why do I have to have them rotate it? Very good. Very good airline pilot guy. I like that. <laughs> but <laughs> see, I got that one. Bud Lenardi. Bob, discount tires always do mine and very good at it. There you go. Discount tires are all over the country. You know, the only thing you want to make sure is you can drive in and there's a place where they can, they can come and work on it. But uh, yeah. You know, it's pretty easy to rotate those because if you know, most of you have, if it's a fifth wheel, you've got those levelers and you can get it up off the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, I missed that. Are you fan? They'll be in Biloxi, Dexton, and Alabama. Okay. Well, right, where are you staying in Destin? We'll give you the inside scoop. Tell us that. Might take a while for him to get it. Um, Facebook user, did you get to winter camp this year at the Lower Falls? No, we didn't do it this year because to Quamnam Falls, where we normally go, they got a big remodeling project going on and they we couldn't have, get enough spots. We, 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 we could have gotten in ourselves, but we really, if we would have opened it up to anybody else, there were a few people that went. I think there were oh, a yeah. dozen of them that went. Yeah, there were there's some folks who went who are used to going because we've done this for so many years. But, you know, it, it just... Plus there not, that, snow. not that it worked out well, but I, little did I know that I was going to have my procedure done where they poked a hole in my heart. And then I got pneumonia, so I couldn't have gone. Yeah, you could not have I gone. could you not have gone. You were still recovering from oh, yeah. not only that, but then you got pneumonia afterwards. Yep, so I was a true mess. I could not have gone. But and we, there wasn't any snow. Well, there wasn't much yeah, snow. Like that much snow instead of the so, I mean, you know, we hear we were so sad that we weren't going. And um, little did we know that we couldn't have gone. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Deb Castle. We'll be at Top, top sale. sale. Yeah, Top Sale. Okay, we like that's top a bit sale east of Destin, but it's a beautiful spot. Uh, for two weeks starting Friday. Uh, well, great. Um, you, well, you won't know our truck. I said, we'll be driving. You look for us <laughs> in our truck. But uh, uh, we'll be down there. Our daughter and granddaughter, who's going to be on spring break from college, she's going to be down, and we're going to have them for a few days. And then we're about to travel all over the state of Florida and the Gulf Coast and do a bunch of stories for you. So. Enjoy it. You will love Top Sale. It's a beautiful park. Bud. My wife just joined RV Lifestyle to uh, send in some recipes, too. Great. Great. We need recipes. We've added a bunch of new spaces this week. We have one. If you are a content creator, you do YouTube or you just want to do better video or photography, it's a great place. We added that. We added one for uh, road warriors, for those who work or remote workers or are on the road all the time. We added a RV kitchen one. We added a space for crafters. Um, so, and then of course a for sale by members. So we've got, I think 20 different spaces, different areas of interest on our RV lifestyle community. Just is the growth has been amazing and it's so much friendly. So I'm glad that she joined that. Silvana Pazzi. It was, know. it was me. It's was that you Silvana that had it? Yeah. A unity twin bed. Silvana, are, do you still have it? Are you? I don't. It's so it takes forever to get these responses here, but 
Uh, I'm curious, do you still have it? Is it listed there? And we can send people around and we're so sorry for what happened with you. Um, that is terrible. Um, and let's see, the APG, I ordered my Unity, the corner bed in April, and we'll get it this May. Wow, three years, three years in a month. <laughs> That's a long time. Uh, you know, if you're working and you're really busy, I mean, if you can plan in advance, if maybe you got an old one that you're using while you're waiting for that new one to come. But if you've just retired and you're ready to go, I can't believe anybody would wait. A Three years. Yeah. So long. Yeah. Time. Get yourself a tent and go out there camping, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ty Webb. I really think everyone should get a, a dual fuel generator so it can run on propane. Much safer. And no need to carry gasoline. Yeah. You know, that's what everybody says. Uh, Oh, it's safer having it running gasoline. I don't think so. I think that you know you want it you want it uh, set up in your unit all the time and wired up and hooked up. And I think propane is safer than carrying around loose gasoline. I mean, I'm just picturing this gasoline in the back of your truck, and Slashing. you get, get no, you get in an accident. And, yeah. But I guess well, you know, over, I guess yeah, you, get you, know, an you never you know. Could still rupture your fuel tank, so. Uh, two corgi moms. Aww. We we have a soft spot for corgis because our son-in-law, our son, our son and daughter-in-law, and our two grandkids who live just on the other side of the cornfield from us have a corgi and that little a little clover. Little she's Clover's a wild Bo's, girl. Bo's girlfriend. Well, his, they, his cousin, she's a little you know. hooligan. Just yeah, she's fun. Yeah. Uh, and thank you. For Energy. Them. Yeah. Corgis have and and they're tough little guys. Okay, Bob Leach. Have you ever heard of anyone using the waggle to locate their stolen RV? Thanks for the discount tire tip. I'll bet any Walmart with an auto center could do it as well. Thanks. I haven't heard anybody using waggle to locate it. Um, and discount tire is good. Um, maybe Walmart could do it. Probably mm -hmm. could. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart has pretty good kind of things. Chris Mondo Biondo. I wanted to buy an LTV RV, but didn't want to wait two years for it. So I bought a 2017 Cruise America Class C 30 foot. Been happy uh, to be RVing. You know, that's Chris bought. That's one of the best ways to buy a Class C that you know has been well maintained. It's used. Their prices are pretty fair. They're not terribly cheap. They're not inexpensive, but they're fair prices because they're so well maintained. And um, the Cruise America, they sell them rut routinely. And he's, I've, we've seen Chris's unit. It's a beautiful Class C. So. Glad to see that you're uh, that you're doing that. One more. Um, okay, let's see. Paul Slavin. Any insurance tips or policy must haves when getting insurance for Class Bs? Well, if you're really going to get insurance for it, you want to go through and see what's already covered with manufacturers' warranties. The fact is, the most of the things that break on a Class B are going to be covered by different manufacturers other than the RV company. You know, the microwave is going to have its own uh, warranty. So will the refrigerator. Uh, so will the Dometic toilet or whatever toilet they have. Your fantastic fans. Your that AC. Are in there, your AC unit. Uh, all that stuff has its own, uh, have its own uh, warranties. And those are all good. Um, the engine is all covered by, you know, um, Dodge Ram, I think in the class of many of the class B's or the transit or the unity from Mercedes. So um, make sure you know what you have covered and for how long make a list, you know, uh, everything is covered inside the RV for two years. Then maybe, you know, are you going to keep it for two years? You're going to trade it in. Uh, you may not need to go much to get any extra insurance for, you know, warranty stuff, but um uh, if you're looking for just general insurance on it, um, go to an expert. And those are the people at, uh, and we should put the, a link up for them at Wholesale Warranties. I think it's, I want to say rvlifestyle.com slash wholesale warranties, or it might be the opposite from that. Uh, you can find them there at our partners page. Just look for Wholesale Warranties. Uh, and they will give you, they will they will walk you through what you need and what, what is not covered with a manufacturer's warranty and what you may want to consider if you really want that peace of mind. Okay. One last pitch for um, just a reminder, if you are one of our community supporters, as soon as this goes off the air, I'm going to click and post for you the details da -da -da, 
of our very first uh, gathering of the year, which is a spring gathering in June. Um, you're going to absolutely love it. It's really going to be fun. You get three days advance notice, then we open it up to everybody. And that will be in a live stream that we do in the RV Lifestyle community on Thursday nights. So uh, check that out. But um, the rest of you, uh, if you have not yet joined our community, come on over and uh, say hi to everybody. It's uh, His address is simple. It's just go to community.rvlifestyle.com and you will find us there. All right. I think that's it. I don't know if we have any more questions. Um, Robin Ostermeyer. That's, well, it wouldn't have been right having the Hello. ask us anything without Robin. <laughs> Do you know when is a good time to visit Sky Bridge in Michigan? Yeah, um, fall is the most spectacular time, Robin, because you walk a beautiful Sky Bridge up high and, you know, the hardwoods are all in color, but uh, spring is good, summer's good. It's, I don't think they're open in the winter, but those raw winds would be working around <laughs> pretty good up there. Uh, but fall is the most spectacular time to visit. And it's a really great, great uh, thing to take a look at. Just open, I think last year or the year before. So uh, it hasn't caught on with others outside of Michigan. A lot of people don't even know it's there yet, but it's just really great. It's just beautiful kind of a swaying bridge over a, what passes in Michigan for some a mountainous area. <laughs> it's not really mountainous, but it's hills, high hills. So there you go. All right. I'm tired. I've got to go up and uh, try and recover because we've got a busy week coming this week, as everybody does. And uh, thank you guys for bailing, uh, for uh, bearing with me for being a little bit behind the uh, eight ball tonight. I was not, I was not on the top of my game. <laughs> but you always are. Oh. All right. We'll be back uh, next week. I don't know. We'll be on the road someplace, and we'll, we'll be here at the same. Please check out our podcast Thursday. Uh, really Wednesday. valuable no, podcast Wednesday. Yes. Thank you. See, uh, Wednesday, the podcast, and then Thursday, 7 PM, uh, we will open all the details up for our spring gathering in June and, uh, hope to see you on that one. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the, of the ask us anything tonight and happy trails.